Legends is synonymous with going for it. I think as a coach, I'm always asking my players to take players on and go for it. And, and that's different. So Legends to me is a place where you can go and where a child can be growing their own self-concept of who they are. You're put in an environment every single day when you're doing the one-on-ones and the two-on-twos where you're set up to have success and you're set up to have failure. And at the end of it, you're going to know that you're coming out doing your best, being competitive, and figuring out exactly who and what you're made of. Uh, as a kid, I was, as Anson Dorrance likes to say, I was marinated in the sport of soccer. Uh, the whole family loved the game of soccer, and they worshipped the more creative players. You know, my dad used to talk about Stanley Matthews, Puskas, uh, he loved Pelé, George Best. But in addition to that, I was brought up in the Charles Hughes system of, you know, stick it in the mixer, you know, long ball, you know, and at best, you know, working with a lot of space in cones and grids, you know, where players weren't expected to be truly amazingly creative. Having worked with Andy for a long time, I and heard him talk about his family's history in the game and, and the connection that he made during his early years coaching, it always struck me as interesting how much he worshipped uh, Maradona and George Best and just the really creative players of, of you know, the old days um, and how that was counter to his time as a player, you know, playing the way you face, long ball first, everything safe, when in doubt, kick it out. It always struck me that that difference for him, um, given his background and that dichotomy. Until 1987, I was a traditional coach. I focused on team tactics and winning instead of promoting uh, ultimate creativity to, so that any player could be an incredible individual. Until in 1987, I worked with Anson Dorrance at the USA Under-19 National Team Camp. And Anson at that camp pointed out to me that we had selected 10 players that were dribblers and goal scorers, or either goal scorers or dribblers. And Anson, in doing so, showed me a new perspective that changed my whole soccer life. So two years after Anson shocked me into realizing that I'd wasted a huge chunk of my first 13 years in coaching, I started the Legends Club. One of the things we have done and I worked on from when I was a kid with the legends and Andy, and even today as a coach, we coach our kids to do this, is the one-on-one -on -one battles that we have at practice. And you ask any kid um, over time, they will tell you, gosh, we do this so much, 90, 95% of the time of our practice. Why do we do it so much? And it's because in those battles, it's an individually fought opportunity. And every moment during that round of one-on-one, -on -one, you have an opportunity to win or to gain an advantage. And in life, that's what it's full of. So every opportunity you have, you have an opportunity to win and to get better. After a number of years of developing great dribblers and goal scorers, one of the criticisms that we found was constantly leveled against our club and against our players were that we were too individualistic and we weren't going anywhere with those skills. And so that was when, uh, fortuitously, we... We took a team to uh, England on tour, my 79-80 team, and we're in the Manchester United Football Festival. And Manchester United had invited the Ghanaian uh, national teams over, their under-19 team and their under-17 team, and Manu had invited them over to play against. What we found out was that the, it was the class of 1992, and the Ghanaians whipped them within an inch of their life, and the Ghanaians were two years younger. Uh, but after the, the game, I went to the Ghanaian coaches because I'd been so impressed with the way in which they played because they were brilliant on the ball, but their perception of the open player and what was possible with a pass and how to penetrate under pressure in a crowd was just something to behold. So the next day, I went to the practice that they were holding because I, you know the coaches had invited me to join. And... I'd never seen anything quite like it because they had two squads. They had their under-19s and 17s all playing, two versus two in a penalty area. And they were going side to side in the penalty area to cone goals on the sidelines of the penalty area. And it was like Grand Central Station in rush hour. And this was just unbelievably crazy. And in my initial estimation, very, very stupid. And... 
as I watched, I started to see things of unbelievable complexity. Aside from fakes and moves and beating players in the one-on-one and getting out of spaces and situations that were so complicated you couldn't believe that they wriggled out of them, they were also playing war passes and overlaps and double passes and doing takeover plays and all these wonderful things under pressure in a crowd. And it was one of those you know, epiphanies, those wake-up calls that I never really challenged my players to both use their skills under pressure in a crowd, but also look for combination plays and look for people that they were playing with under pressure in a crowd. This was the core of what they did every session. And these talented players had grown up using these fakes and moves because it was part of their culture in all four corners of Ghana. You know, all the big cities, all the small villages and towns, they'd grown up doing this fantastically skillful, creative, uh, you know, job. And that was what was beautiful about this is I saw in my mind's eye a vision that no team would then be able to defend against my Legends players by parking the bus and just crowding the penalty area. We've created an environment here in Kansas City that emulates the street soccer environments that the greatest players in world history grew up in. So what really dragged my attention to Legends was this one-of-a-kind indoor facility with all these indoor fields surrounded by boards, keeping the ball in play the whole time. Uh, really reminded me of the environment that I grew up in in Brazil, uh, where we played on the streets or in the parks everywhere all the time. Um, the ball is never out of play. We didn't want to waste any second of our playing time. All of the great players played street soccer in tiny spaces, in concrete jungles, where the pressures of limited time and space force them to be incredible players. And I think that's what develops great players. Brazil has won five World Cups and had the best players in history because they all grew up playing on the streets with that freedom. And that's also what the Legends Club provides, the freedom of play, being creative, taking risks, being skillful. I, I always love talking to Philippe about the environment that he grew up playing soccer in, in, in Brazil, um, because the connection that, that, that Brazil culturally has with the game is so special. And I think probably, at least based on talk, talking to Philippe, probably what makes Brazil such a strong powerhouse from a soccer perspective. And, and I think that the facility here that we've created in Kansas City does that. It's, it's truly bringing street soccer to the suburbs. So when I was uh, being trained as a coach uh, here for the Legends, one thing that really stood out for me was the wall ball. Um, I was shadowing a practice and I saw these kids smashing the ball against the wall, collecting it back with a good first touch, setting it up and hitting again, sometimes with the teammate competing against each other. And that really reminded me of m myself growing up as a kid. I would spend the whole day smashing that ball against the wall. But that repetition made me a great shooter. That was my strongest attribute as a player, was that I, I could hit the ball from four yards with a lot of power. And I scored great goals uh, in my college career uh, by doing that. And uh, it was all because of that repetition. But having these kids do it here with a coach, providing them information and correcting their technique, that's what's gonna make their development go off the charts. The hypothesis is it takes 10,000 hours of deep practice in order to become a fantastic athlete or a specialist at anything, whether it's chess or any other discipline. What I did is I looked at how do we take that 10,000 hour rule and then structure the environment to reduce 10,000 hours, perhaps even to 500 in order to get the same amount of development in one hour as opposed to 20 hours. And what we've created here, for example, as one of the um, very unique components of our indoor training facility is we've got 56 box soccer courts. And in these box soccer courts, our club record is 1,474 shots in one hour. That's 10 four-minute rounds 
a two minute break between each round because the rounds are exhausting and our boxes make this possible because they're only 20 feet by 12 feet and that feeds the ball back to the shooter or close enough to the shooter so that if they've got rocket fast reactions they can get to their previous shot quickly as it rebounds off of the front wall and hit it again and again and again. So in four minutes of doing this, they can hit over a hundred shots. Our mission at Legend Soccer Club is to give kids a platform to become more brave, uh, more creative, and develop leadership skills as a result. Um, we want our kids to be, to be willing to take any risk and take on any problem or challenge that comes in front of them. Be creative enough to think through the different possible solutions that, that might work and choose the one that they think can be most successful and then have the leadership um, mentality that puts them in a scenario where there's nothing too difficult for them and there's nothing that they don't have enough self-confidence that they can't do. The value of the legend's philosophy has got very little to do ultimately with soccer. It conditions each and every individual that goes through it to take massive but safe risks within the sport of soccer to expand their willingness to accept greater risk in life and be brave, creative leaders in the long run.